We have made it to chapter 12 titled Menu Labeling, which is our final chapter in our nutrition textbook. Our objectives for this chapter describe the federal le legislation that governs menu labeling in restaurants and food service establishments, summarize the menu labeling requirements for covered establishments, explain nutrient content claims and health claims for restaurants and food service operations, and, and identify acceptable truth in menu practices and appropriate menu disclaimers and explain their placement in marketing materials. And lastly, describe systems to monitor the operation for compliance with applicable labeling regulations. We've seen, especially in the last few years, that business environment for restaurants and food service operations changes regularly. Competition, economic conditions, food trends, and agricultural issues will all have an impact on how we do business, as well as federal, state, and local laws. Coronavirus in the past few years has had an effect on pretty much every area I just mentioned. Anyone in the business has to evaluate their operation and educate themselves on each aspect of the business. In previous chapters, we've talked quite a bit about menu labeling, but as far as the background, the Nutrition Labeling and Education Act of 1990 set the framework for a food label for canned and packaged goods. When it was enacted, it exempted menu labeling in restaurants and food service establishments. Later on, a provision was enacted requiring that when a food service establishment makes either a nutrient content claim or health claim on a menu, it will require a label. A nutrient content claim characterizes the level of a nutrient claim on a food label or restaurant menu. For example, stating that an item is low in sodium. A health claim is an expressed or implied statement on the menu characterizing the relationship to a disease or health. For example, claiming that the item is heart healthy. In March 2010, Section 4205 of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act was signed into law, giving the FDA the responsibility of enforcing the provisions of the National Menu Labeling Legislation. This law applies to chain restaurants and similar retail food establishments having 20 or more locations. They can be operating under the same name or slight variations in the name or selling substantially the same menu items. The businesses are required to provide calorie information, a statement about the recommended daily calorie intake for adults, and a clear statement notifying customers of the availability of additional nutritional information. They are also required to have additional nutritional information available on site and available to consumers upon request. An establishment is defined as covered under the law if it represents itself as a restaurant to the public, its primary business is to sell food, and more than 50% of its floor area is used for preparing, purchasing, serving, consuming, or storing food, or more than 50% of its gross revenues are generated by the sale of food. Covers, covered establishments are required to label their standard menu, menu items. A standard menu item includes combination meals, variable menu items, self-service items, and food on display. The food not requiring a label are custom orders, daily specials, items being test marketed that appear on the menu for less than 90 days, and temporary items that appear for less than 60 days. Menu and menu boards must contain the calorie declaration for each covered establishment. The menu or menu board is the primary rating that a customer uses to make an order selection, and the establishment may have several. The law requires covered establishments to post the number of calories found in each menu item next to the menu item. This is done to clearly link the item to the number of calories so there is no confusion. 
Calorie declarations must follow font size and prominence rules and must be in the same color and font size as the menu item and in a contrasting background similar to the menu item. Menus must also include two statements intended to help the public with their food selections. The first provides more information on daily calorie recommendations. The proposed wording is a 2000 calorie daily diet is used as the basis for general nutrition advice. However, individual calorie needs may vary. The second statement refers to additional nutrition information on premises. It reads, additional nutrition information available upon request. The nutritional information that is required may be developed by a reasonable basis, as we learned about in previous chapters. Establishments should maintain records on how they arrive at the nutritional information, and they should be consistent in purchasing, re recipe standardization, and preparation. Businesses operating 20 or more vending machines are also included. Vending machines are defined as a self-service device, and vending machine operators would have to provide nutritional information for the products they sell to consumers. Covered vending machine operators have three choices for declaring nutritional information. They can provide calorie disclosures, allow customers the opportunity to view the nutritional information on the packages of food, or present the nutrition information at the point of purchase. The laws that govern the menu are known as truth in menu laws. It is very important that food is represented correctly to the customers. It must be served how it is described on the menu with accurate preparation methods and ingredients. The establishment is responsible for the accuracy of any nutrient co content or health claims that are made and for the nutrient values and formatting required by the national menu legislation. A menu disclaimer may be necessary to add to menus. A menu disclaimer is a statement informing the customer that there is no legal warranty or guarantee of satisfaction implied or responsibility accepted. For example, a disclaimer warning a customer about eating undercooked meat and eggs. Disclaimers regarding nutrient calculations might also want to be included by the establishment. Managers should always consult with legal professionals to review the disclaimer prior to including it on the menu to ensure that it follows laws correctly. And as with anything, menu labeling requires a financial commitment. Compliance to menu regulations should be added to the marketing plan. Obtaining a nutritional analysis should be done with any new menu items. Staff training should be done on menu labeling laws and regulations and be consistent uh, and have consistent updating. Menus and menu boards need to be changed to reflect calorie counts with any menu or ingredient changes. If the establishment is not covered, they need to, be, they need to determine if it will be cost effective to do voluntary menu labeling. And that completes the Chapter 12 lecture. As usual, please review remaining summary slides, read Chapter 12, which is very short, and complete the Chapter 12 quiz. Next week, you will have a review final test followed uh, following week by the final test and certifi certification test. And I hope you all have a really great week.